Hello everyone, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel to do a, a little bit of a different video from what we've been putting out on the channel a lot over the last few months, doing a lot of team-focused analytical content. Uh, I've done some sort of video essay type uh, style content as well, but today we're gonna do a, a bit of a fun one and it's a concept called AFL Underrated Overrated, which is something I did a number of years ago and I'm gonna give it another crack given we are in the midst of the off season. So the basic premise for this video is I got you guys through the YouTube YouTube, uh, community tab uh, on this YouTube channel as well as Instagram to supply some topics some football concepts uh, where I'm going to discuss in this video uh, as to whether I think they're underrated overrated or rated about right based on my completely subjective opinion so we had like 57 submissions I had to trim that down a little bit into the high 40s there was a few double ups a few things like that and a few uh, submissions that just weren't quite right for what the question was so I've done my best to include all of you and I'm just gonna rattle off pretty quick fire all the topics and discuss whether I think they're underrated or overrated and of course this isn't going to be a video where we all agree on different things I mean like I've said previously my opinion of whether something is overrated or underrated kind of relies on my perception being correct as to what other people think about that thing. We'll go through it anyway, and I'll, I'll try to give justification for each point as I go through it. Before I get into the video, guys, uh, we have had a lot of new viewers look at the True Footy YouTube channel over the last 28 days. In fact, 50,200 unique people have uh, watched a True Footy video in the last 28 days. So I have a request if you've been watching the content and you enjoy it, or perhaps you're just interested to to see a AFL channel produce content between now and the end of the 2024 season. This would be a great channel to subscribe to and I'd really appreciate it because I'm really trying hard to grow the channel as it currently stands. But without further ado, let's crack into what is underrated and what is overrated in the AFL space. I'm gonna read them off my phone, we're gonna go through quick fire and I'll give you my justification. So the first one is from Lukey Dukes who asked uh, about Kane Corns. Lukey says that he's either spot on or extremely far-fetched. Yeah, this is an interesting one because I, on this platform, have at times tried to take apart Kane Corns' arguments and I believe successfully so. That being said, I don't actually really have it in my heart to hate Kane Corns and I've really been thinking about this, I've been marinating over this over the last few months and I actually think as annoying as he is and he has pissed me off a lot when he's been talking about West Coast but that kind of dynamic's kind of fun and I do think the AFL media landscape is better off for having someone like Kane Corns in it because while he might say some stuff that I think is dumb he's also said some stuff out there that other journos are probably not as bold enough to say. Also, him saying dumb stuff kind of just makes more content for me because I can react to it and try and dissect it like I've done with Sam McClure, like I've done with Peter Sumich. So, do I think he's always right? No, but I do think uh, I do think we're better off for having him and that kind of pains me to say it, but you're all right, Kane, you're all right. Uh, the next one is from H. Hybers. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong. He asked about Nick Larkey. Uh, look, I think it was one of those things where Nick Larkey probably has been underrated a little bit as to what he was capable of. And then he, we sat back and saw him kick 73 goals this year and thought, oh, actually, no, Larkey's pretty good. At least that's my perception. So he's certainly not overrated. Uh, he's probably close to being underrated. That being said, I think now people are starting to click and be like, oh, no, he's actually a good key forward. Uh, Max Mitchell and Wildco uh, both asked about the mid-season trade period. I think the mid-season trade period as a concept might be a little bit overrated. I am a little skeptical as to how many big deals will actually go through during that period because I feel like it'll be so chaotic, you know, asking players to relocate on, on short notice. And I also kind of like this concept of part of the, the, the game is to get your list of 42 to 44 players ready for the season at the start of the season. If you have depth issues, you don't necessarily get the opportunity to paper over the cracks by trading uh, someone in. So I don't really care for it. I think it's a little bit overrated as a concept. We have a question about the Eagles song. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think it's everyone hates it and yet I still think it is overrated. Shane23 says the goal review system is underrated. I kind of agree with that. We kind of only notices it, uh, notice it when it pisses us off and yet it probably has given us a lot of correct results that previously you know would have gone completely undetected. Uh, so I, I agree it's probably underrated. King Dreamer says the uh, ball magnets. Now I'm not sure whether you mean the concept of players who win a lot of the ball or you mean the uh, like the business, the app that um, you know Tom Mitchell and Patrick Cripps and all that guys, those guys have. The concept of a ball magnet in the AFL probably is a little bit overrated. It's more about the impact, in my personal opinion. As for that platform, ball magnets, I can't say I've really delved into it too much, other than watch the odd like podcast that uh, Tom Mitchell's done, and I've been like, yeah, this is good. So I'm all for it. So maybe underrated in that sense. West Coast 2021 drafts uh, haul from Benjamin Herbert. We got Brady. 
Brady Hoff, we've got Rhett Bazo, we've got Jack Williams, Campbell Chesser. Um, probably rated as much. I do think Brady Hoff is underrated, probably even amongst West Coast fans. Darcy5927 says 3.20 Sunday time slot. Uh, no, this is horrific. I used to have to go to a lot of them as an Eagles member. And also late Sunday games are annoying because Sunday nights are really important time as a content creator to, to make content. So the, the later it is, the, the worse I feel as an Eagles fan. Uh, ben QLD asks 4 and 20 pies. A little bit overrated, I reckon. I'd rather go get a pie from an actual nice bakery than get a 4 and 20, personally. Donald Impet asks about Gather Round. Hmm. Now, I have not attended Gather Round, and therefore I'm probably missing the charm of it. It does look like a lot of fun. There's a lot of like other footy content creators that go and, um, you know, it just seems like a bit of a party that weekend, so I'd imagine that's cool. But as a person who's been overseas and watching it from afar like it does nothing for me so maybe a little bit overrated but i'm sure i'm not coming from a place of experience there uh, bailey mead and jufus both asked about ruckman and the role of a ruckman i think at times it's been underrated i do think maybe prior to like max gorn um becoming as good as he has there was probably a period where we had a bit of a void in truly unbelievably elite ruckman and therefore, maybe the um, importance of that role got diminished a little bit. But put it this way, I think you can get away with having an okay C-grade Ruckman in there. Uh, that being said, the, the truly best Rucks of the game, your Gorns, your Nat Nui's, your Prime Grundies, obviously Dean Cox back in the day, and heaps that I'm just overlooking right now, of course. I do think they make a big difference to your team. So maybe uh, I'll do it on the side of uh, underrated. Uh, Zach Quirk says, attacking halfbacks who have defensive flaws. Good. This is a good point because they do get a little bit romanticized, if that's the right word. Uh, I would say that they're not overrated unless you have too many of them. I think every team needs to have one who's really good off halfback and distributing. And if he gives up a little bit defensively, you can live with that, but you can't have too many of those in the same side. Martin Reed and Seb Vanders both have the same sort of question about the National Reserves comp, and Martin Reed says it's underrated. Uh, ooh, I think I think it's definitely something we have to work towards because I think that is like the ideal um, framework for the future of our competition. I'm not really in a rush for it. I think maybe that's because I'm an Eagles fan and I've seen us be completely irrelevant in the waffle competition. That being said, seeing reserves of actual AFL teams go against like actual peers, uh, particularly, you know, obviously, so when West Coast play Peel in the waffle, we get a general feel for how West Coast youngsters go against uh, Fremantle's youngsters. That being said, if you open that up to the whole context of the competition, we can probably get a little bit more information about how some of the younger prospects are doing. So maybe it is underrated as a concept, although I, I'm not really in a rush for it because like I said, we, we're not even competitive at waffle level. So Sean DuPont asks, uh, coaches as tacticians, are they underrated or overrated? Probably a little bit overrated. I think we may be quick to assume that coaches uh, are necessarily all genius tacticians, all you know, are purely rated based on how tactically smart they are. But I think the reality is different coaches are different stylistically. So some coaches will be master tacticians and some will just be really good leaders and the, the tactical stuff gets you know down fed to, to somebody else to, to oversee. So maybe a little bit overrated in that sense. That being said, some of them are genuine, genuinely good tacticians. And Slay says, North Melbourne's list, is this overrated or underrated? Well, I'm, I'm it's clearly not overrated because uh, I don't think there's a lot of respect out there. I think the young talent is probably a little bit underrated on balance. But then again, I, th I think most people accept it. You know, Harry Sheasel, George Wardlaw, McKercher, Dersma, these guys are guns. Maybe I would say that their list has played worse over the last two years in particular than the talent should suggest. Especially when you compare like the first fortnight of 2023, North Melbourne looked pretty decent um, and they dropped off in a big way. And, and the, I would say the same thing for 2022. Uh, they just looked worse than the sum of their parts. So in terms of list talent, maybe a little bit underrated. Simcock Bailey and uh, Jordan Johnston both ask about the MCG. Jordan Johnston says he reckons the MCG is overrated. Hey guys, just want to briefly interrupt this video to talk to you about a message from our sponsor, Druzy's Athlete Academy. Now, a lot of you probably know Druzy through collaborations on this channel and me appearing on his channel, but not all of you may be aware that Druzy is actually a fully qualified strength and conditioning coach. So if you're a young male or female athlete wanting to take your footy game to the next level with preseason just around the corner, you guys should be aware that Druzy does have a pre-season SNC bundle available. Where Druzy, as a fully qualified SNC coach, like I said, can help transform your game in 12 weeks. An AFL-specific gym program and an AFL-specific running program. And throughout, you'll receive personalized coaching, which can include advice as well around nutrition and recovery. 
So if you're someone who wants to take a more dedicated and I guess professional approach to your footy, Druzy's offering his pre-season AFL bundle at $39.99 a week for that 12-week program. But be aware that if you use the code TRUEFOOTY20 at checkout, you get 20% off. So like I said, if you're serious about your footy, it's time to invest in yourself and don't forget to use the discount for 20% off. Uh, I know Jordan and he's an Eagles fan and I would imagine maybe that the exposure to Optus Stadium and, and how good that stadium is has probably diminished how cool the MCG seems. Uh, and I'd imagine maybe in Adelaide, that's the same with the Adelaide Oval. That being said, I wouldn't go as far as to say that it is overrated. I think it's a great stadium, but not quite as new and fresh as Optus Stadium. So I'll say adequately rated, but then I think Optus Stadium is probably a nicer ground. I haven't been to Adelaide Oval. Carlton Flaggers asks Jesse Motlop. It's a good question. I think Jesse Mutlop's good. I generally am a little bit of at a loss to, to really know what his public perception is, which is kind of the whole point of this video, right? Uh, I don't know whether there's much hype about Jesse Mutlop, so I'd probably err on the side of saying underrated. I don't think he's overrated. I, th I think he's a good young player, and I'd be happy to hear that he would return to WA hypothetically. That would be great. Leo King asks about Jamie Cripps, who says the most underrated small forward I've seen. I wouldn't go as far as to say it's most underrated small. I'd, I'd need some more time to really contemplate that. That being said, I think Jamie Cripps is arguably the most underrated eagle I've seen in a while. And that kind of leads into Jay Stee's question, which is about Brad Shepard and how underrated he is. I agreed by they're both underrated. Brad Shepard did win an All-Australian though. And uh, Jamie Cripps, I think, has just been so important for West Coast. I'm not saying he should have been an All-Australian, but watch the last handful of games of 2023, and that's Cripps at his best, but he did also have a couple of years where he just had the fumbles and um, yeah, played below his standard. Jake Mazengarp and Brooklyn Keynes both ask uh, about LDU. I don't think overrated. I'm a big fan of this guy. I think he's an absolute superstar waiting to happen. He just needs to get his body right. I think there is a genuine chance he wins a Brownlow at some point in his career, so I'll say underrated. King Dreamer says Dimmer, Dimmer Hardwick. Uh, phew, definitely not overrated. I think he gets the respect he deserves. I think it's really impressive, not just the three premierships, but when you consider where Richmond were when Hardwick took over that club, uh, I remember it vividly because West Coast and Richmond were down the bottom at, the, uh, at that point of time. And uh, his impact was pretty immediate as, as coach, so I think, I think he's rated about right. And that goes again for Dusty Martin. I think at times, maybe, I think prior to like 2013 or 2014, whenever Dusty really clicked, I know it was 16 you won his brown low. Sorry, it was 17 actually. But I feel like I kind of rated Dusty more so than the average punter. I feel like he did have his detractors for a little while, just based on the people around me, I guess. Uh, that being said, I think he is an absolute modern day goat and probably rated about right because he is stupidly good. And, and to be honest, at this point in his career, he's still decent and doesn't get talked about at all. So I'd say he's almost underrated. Now. Leo King says Jared Witts, uh, probably underrated in terms of like just the production he puts out over time. And he's always ranked really high for hitouts, and yet nobody really talks about him. So I'd say a little bit underrated, but not a truly elite ruck. Jack Sinclair is that suggestion. You know what? I, I, I don't think he's underrated anymore. I, I think because he's won his second All-Australian jumper, I think everyone knows how good Jack Sinclair is. So I think he's rated about right. I don't think he's overrated, but I think he's transcended being underrated now, if that makes sense. Brian Antonio suggests Andrew Brayshaw is uh, overrated because he's only had one good year. I would disagree. I don't think he's underrated. Maybe he's a little bit underrated, actually. Sure, he's had one clear best year, but I do think the build-up to that was very consistent and gradual. And that best year was also winning the MVP award. Yeah, I, I realize he didn't have an amazing year this year, but he is still quite young. Like, he's still the same age as Oscar Allen, Adam Chera, and I uh, would say that uh, compared to some of the other midfielders in that draft, he's going pretty well. Milo, or Milo, Milo Heffernan says Hawthorne's midfield. Uh, Milo believes it is a top eight quality midfield. Probably a little bit underrated. It probably isn't a midfield that gets talked about in like genuine AFL media circles. I do think there's a lot of pro Hawthorne midfield uh, consensus like online, like w the comments in my videos and stuff like that. So I think, I think it's rated about right in that sense. However, you're right. It is a midfield that almost punches above its weight in terms of age and how the rest of the team performs. They did finish third last, last year, but I, I would agree it's probably an underrated midfield. Riles Macker, shout out, says uh, Tim Taranto, probably rated about right. Probably rated about right. Like he's not a truly elite player, but he's 
just a very damn good one and he had a great season that's the way i perceive him and that's kind of consistent where you know with where he finished in the brown low um and i think that's consistent with the media narrative so i think he's rated about right i'm intrigued what other people think about that connor doily says kickouts being counted as a disposal yeah i agree that it does inflate stats a little bit having said that like how do you to what point do you change that because sure if you run out you know for two meters and then kick like that looks lame that that counts as a disposal to you but what happens if you run out dodge three players run up to you know the, the center wing and bomb it long into the 50 and someone takes a mark that should probably count as a disposal right so at what point do you set the rule um that's a really tough one to regulate but i get what your point is it's probably probably a bit overrated if that works all the goals too and caleb have asked about marvel stadium I have not been to Marvel Stadium to attend a game. I did a tour there in about 2005, uh, and I remember it being cool, but then again, that was back in the day before Optus Stadium existed, um, and so I don't know what my perception was like. I was probably comparing it to Subi. Um, so I actually don't know about Marvel Stadium, but I'd be intrigued to see what people in the comments think. Blake Mack asks about Thursday night footy. Um, underrated when you are just chilling at home, overrated if you are a fan of that team and you want to go to the game that sucks there's nothing worse than going to the footy the night before work in my opinion my experience i used to start at 5 a.m a lot which sucked jersey says afl commentators underrated underrated in a, in a sense i i have criticized them a lot over time i don't think they're particularly super professional i think i think we see biases creep in so obviously when you're watching footy and just like their tonality, when one team scores, it's all happy days. The other team scores, it's dead silent. I don't think they're particularly good, but I also do think that nobody likes them and therefore they're probably underrated, if that makes sense. I'm sure, I know there's, you know, commentators that we do appreciate, like your Kometis, your Huddos and stuff like that. But even Huddo isn't amazing at, at being consistent with, um, you know, his tone and stuff like that. But I don't know, I, I still like him enough, but there are some that I don't particularly enjoy. Uh, we got John Foran. Giants theme song, unpopular opinion, overrated. I don't find it, I find it catchy, but I'm glad it's not my team song. That being said, it is an improvement on the Eagles one, so maybe I should think about that again. Uh, Jess asks, Q Clash. Definitely not overrated, because I don't think there's too much anticipation about it. It could be underrated this year, because I, I feel like Gold Coast, I'm not gonna say they're gonna make the finals, but they could be a bit more of a formidable team than they have been in previous years, and therefore we could see more exciting Q clashes this coming season. James Sned asks about Toby Green, rated correctly. Uh, he's definitely not underrated because everyone knows who he is, but I rated him as the second best player in the comp right now, I think. And he kicked 66 goals this year. As a, as a small to medium type, like that's, that's unreal. You can't argue with that. Brody Allen asks about Frampton's job on Andrews in the grand final. Hmm, I have heard a fair bit about this. I mean, to some extent underrated because not a lot of people would really know that much about what Frampton, um, his role on, on Andrews in that grand final. And therefore, if you just look at two disposals that Frampton got, you'd probably just think he had a nightmare. So I'd say a little bit underrated, but at the same time, Harris Andrews did have some impact. He took nine marks, I think, in that game. So underrated, but uh, I don't think it's necessarily worth blowing out of proportion. Boyley94 says, Eagles 2006 Premiership team. Probably rated it about correct because we weren't super dominant. It was just that the midfield was amazing. And I do think it gets its credit for that. Um, I mean, in some senses, we were very close to going back to back and winning two, but we were also close to missing out on two grand finals altogether. So I think I think it gets the recognition, recognition it deserves. Leo King says wet weather footy. I like it. I don't know what other people think. I, I think it's kind of fun to watch, provided it's close. When it's like 70 plays 20 and it's wet, it's shocking. Playing in wet weather footy is actually surprisingly fun. I remember playing a game hungover once and it was absolutely pissing it down. And I was like, this is the best thing I could have asked for because I, uh, it was just refreshing to keep me away. <laughs> it is kind of fun though, wet weather footy. LD Sports asks, the idea of moving the grand final away from the MCG every three or four years, uh, overrated. I don't necessarily want that to happen. Now, is it fair? The only fair outcome is to have the host play the grand final every year because moving it away from the grand final every three or four years does not make it more fair necessarily maybe slightly but not by much and uh yeah i like the mcu grand final i know it's i, I can't really explain why i just i just kind of do 
Rota Wash has a couple of questions. Opening round, first of all. Uh, you know what? I, at first, I thought it was stupid, and I don't like that so many teams will be on so many different games for a while, for the first like month and a half of the season. That being said, the, the games themselves look good, and we we're all going to tune in, and uh, I'm kind of looking forward to it. So maybe a little bit underrated, only because I don't think anyone was positive about it. Uh, the next question from Roto Wash was expanding the game to 20 teams. I think as if you assume that Tassie will be the 19th and that's going to happen, I'm pretty certain that's going to happen. Every now and then I read something that suggests like it's not completely locked in. Uh, but yeah, I would want to make 19, 20 as soon as possible. Yeah. And finally, Grub on Tinder asks Druzy. Druzy also asked Druzy, which is funny. Um, Druzy, overrated. I, I think some of his uh, vlogs these days are getting about 100, 120 views, and frankly, that's far too much. <laughs> no, nah, I'm only kidding. Druzy is very underrated. Probably the most underrated AFL YouTuber that I can think of. So uh, go check him out. But anyway, guys, that, that will do for AFL underrated, overrated. Let me know what you agree with and disagree with. Um, if you if you want to drop some in the comments, maybe we'll do another one. Like if you can think of another 30 to 40 uh, collectively, not you individually, please don't write 30 to 40 in, in one comment. Uh, but if you, if you guys are, want to see this again, we'll, we'll do it sometime in the future. But hope you're enjoying the content. I hope you're subscribed and I'll see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.